Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Bench Warmer Sports Podcast. Ravi here, joined by Davian. Theodore has returned. What's that? We all moved in to the University of Alabama. Davian, roll tide. The honor. Roll tide. Roll tide. Exactly. If you didn't hear that enough times on our last podcast, which was our college football breakdown, Theodore unfortunately couldn't make it. Theodore, any thoughts on Alabama before we introduce the main topic of this podcast? Yeah, okay. The QB situation is depressing. Jalen Miro sucks. Tyler Buchner sucks. And so does Ty Simpson. But the rest of the team is so, so good. You know, the fact of the matter is Georgia just won two national championships with Stetson Bennett. So we can do it with Jalen Milrow. Needless to say, Bama will be your 2023 college football champions. And of course, before we get into anything, Davey and Theodore, how are you guys? You guys are all moved in. You mm-hmm. guys are now college freshmen. It feels like I just met you guys a year and a half, two years ago. And look at you guys now. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. They grow up so fast. Uh, I know. <laughs> no, I'm doing good. Proud, I'm doing good. You know, podcast host. <laughs> oh man next year we'll be sitting Rafi will be like a nine to five working behind the desk you know yeah like he'll be recording from his little cubicle mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man no i'm doing good doing good you know getting situated with everything out here um going to the girls soccer game uh go go bears go go big red i don't even know our, i don't even know our chant yet um it's like sports is such like a joke here like everyone just tailgates really here um, but I'm doing good. Uh, you know, I'm wearing a Patriots hat. You know, uh, I got, I got, you know, the Patriots might have gotten smothered by the Titans the other day in uh, preseason, but it's okay. At least uh, they didn't get smothered like those other guys that got injured, which I hope they feel better and get well soon. But it's actually kind of crazy. I want to talk about that real quick, that how, like, in the NFL, like, these preseason games are just getting canceled. I think it's all kind of a matter, like, after the whole DeMar Hamlin thing, now that preseason games are getting canceled, that nobody wants to take the risk. But for the before we do that, Theodore, how you been? I'm doing great. Um, Bama is a very, very awesome school. I can't lie. I'm, I'm having the time of my life here. Um, I am also going to a women's soccer game later today. Bama is ranked seventh in the country. They went to the final four last year, and they're playing Memphis today. Um, I'm not wearing a football hat, but I was told I got to the dining hall that you went with my friends about an hour ago, and they all started laughing and said it looked like I was fresh off the subway. And they had me say a variety of New York-related praises just to laugh at me. So that is how my afternoon is going right now. Yikes. Amazing. I honestly love that. That's that's great. You can call it a little bit of bullying, but you can also call it just being boy. No, but like, I, here's the thing. I have to rep for New York now. Like, I am the New Yorker, and I am fully going to embrace that role. You need to. I talk shit about New York, like, you know, in New- when I'm in New York. But now that I'm down south, like, that's my home, and you are not going to trash talk it. So that is my that, statement. That is how I feel about Chicago and Illinois, where I will rip on my state so much. But the moment you put me with another person, I had a long debate with someone from New York about pizza just because I'm I'm from Chicago. And although I have my gripes about the city, Chicago nah. South pizza no. is the best pizza. No. So we'll get into that another time. No, on another another podcast, so we don't get absolutely derailed here. Let's get into something a little less controversial, which is our NFL predictions. Last week, as I mentioned, we did our college football predictions, predicted all the Power Five conferences, predicted our college football playoff teams. This week, we're going to do the NFL season as that's going to be starting not this Thursday, but next Thursday from this recording of the podcast. So let's start off with the AFC. We're going to start off with the AFC West, just because that's where I have my number one team, the Kansas City Chiefs. I have the Chiefs at 14 and 3. I have the Chargers at 9 and 8. I have the Raiders 7 and 10 and the Broncos 7 and 10 as well. Yeah, I got to kind of agree. I mean, the Chiefs are going to be elite this year. I think it'll be the number 1 overall seed. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if they like ended up as the 2 seed, but they're going to be very good. 14 and 3 is where I'd like to put them as well. And then I like the Chargers a little better than nine and eight. So I'm going to go 10 and seven there. It's a stacked AFC, but it'll yeah. be easy for that team to win 10 games. The one thing, and look, okay, so we all remember, if you watched the show last year, how much I was trashing on the Denver Broncos. Sean Payton is an incredible football coach. Yes. And yeah. Russell Wilson is not going to be as bad this year as he was last year. He can't right. be. And the team still has. Hal, yep. I would not be surprised if we see the Denver Broncos in the playoffs. 
I think they'll fall short. I'm going to go like eight and nine for the Broncos. But I could very easily see them being the true surprise of the AFC this year and sneaking in while a lot of other teams, which we'll get to later, have big, big letdowns. Yeah, Yeah, I uh, agree. And at the end of the day, I think we all share the same thing as everyone around the NFL world does, the same opinion on the Denver Broncos, where it's Russell Wilson really is – he can't be that bad. Like, Mm -hmm. he had such a terrible season last year where you just cannot expect that season to be replicated again, especially with the Broncos extending him prior to last season and now with Sean Payton. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just... I have the Broncos at 7-10. and 10. I think that might be a little harsh. The Chargers, I have a 9-8, and eight, but that's because mm-hmm. they're cursed, and I'm allowed to have that opinion. David, what are your thoughts on the AFC West? Yeah, so AFC West, I got... Uh, I'm really high on the Chargers this year, but I still got the Chiefs at 15-2. and two. I got the Chargers at 12-5, and five, Broncos at 10-7, and seven, Raiders at 3-13. and 13. I really don't like this Raiders team. I think the addition yeah. of Jimmy Garoppolo uh, replacing Derek Carr is just... It, it's not the right move for them. They're, you know, like... Yes, that Josh McDaniel, Jimmy Garoppolo connection might be good. So I wouldn't be surprised maybe if they do better than the Broncos. But even then, I highly doubt it. I agree that the Broncos can't be that bad. But I'm putting them a 10-7 simply because Sean Payton, great coach. But, you know, he has his drama from the past, right? I mean, we all know how he was suspended one year because of uh, uh-huh. a tackle gate it was. I mean, look, look, I'm just saying, like, he's already been making comments like, when he just went, he ripped Hackett. He ripped on the pre, like last year's team completely. And he does. He needs to understand that the players from last year are still on the team like today. I know we had yeah. this conversation before, but they don't care about Hackett. Like Hackett lost the locker room. So no, I know that. But he ripped on the players too, and that's one thing you can't do as a coach. No, I think not well, national television. I believe that. that Sean Payton knows what he's doing here. I think he's too good of a coach to make that kind of mistake. I think it was a calculated decision. I think it'll work out. And I really think that Denver could make some noise this year. I think so, too. That's why I have them at 10-7. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just think the Raiders made a lateral move, so I don't really have them. <laughs> yeah. None of them going too far from their record last year. I don't see them improving too much. I think we all can agree that Jimmy Garoppolo is certainly a lateral move, if not a slight downgrade. Sure. But then again, like I still think they have good weapons on offense. Their defense isn't absolutely terrible. I think it improved a little bit this offseason. So the Raiders are a team to look out for. But yeah, the Broncos it's again for them, seven and ten. But I can certainly time, see them making the sorry. playoffs. Rafi, it's time for Vegas to rebuild. I mean there's no other way to put it, right? Like we're all oh, I agree. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. It's really they gotta just fully commit, get a good pick and draft Caleb Williams, you know. Yeah. Right. And if the Chargers absolutely fall off this year, I don't think many Raiders fans or sorry, if the Raiders fall off this year, I don't think they many people are going to be shocked, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for the Raiders, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, Theodore, because even worst case, too, if they're not able to get Caleb Williams, let's just say they fall to, like, top five or two or three. I mean, you can either take your quarterback or you can take Marvin Harrison Jr. from The Ohio State University, and him lined up against Devontae Adams would be extremely scary for any team, even with a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think it'll certainly be interesting to see where the Raiders stand. Moving on to the AFC East, this is a conference or a division rather that Davian certainly has his opinions on Davian had some opinions on the Patriots that we will keep confidential for the sake of him not getting absolutely trashed online I have the Bills at 13 and 4 the Jets 11 and 6 the Dolphins 11 and 6 and the Patriots at 6 and 11 Dolphins main concern is Tua the Dolphins can certainly be better and make and potentially even win the AFC East I certainly think it's a possibility just because how good of their team is thank you trade Lance trade I would not be shocked if the Dolphins are even better than 11 6 this year. Okay. Um, Davey, you go first because I got a lot to say. And I want to hear your Patriots take first. Okay. Okay. So, um, look, I tried being non biased, but, you know, um, so I got the Bills at 13 and 4. I think Bills are the kings of this division right now. I'm saying that even as a Patriots fan. Um, I got Patriots at 10 and 7. I got Dolphins at 8 and 9. And I got Jets at 7 and 10. Why do I say that? I'm really not buying the Jets hype train. I love Rodgers. He's a great QB, but I don't know if they've really done enough to really make sure that this team wins. Uh, Dolphins, like I could see it flip-flop. I could see Jets finishing third, Dolphins finishing last in the division. Um, you know, the Dolphins, are, it's a very young team. It's a very good team. But the injuries are always stacking up for them. And, you know, you can't really predict the injuries. And I don't wish injuries upon anyone. But, you know, we saw Tua last year, right? Concussion after concussion. We don't know if he's fully recovered yet even. So uh, that, that those are my predictions, really. 
Um, Theodore, I want to hear your take on the Jets because I think you have an interesting take on that. Yeah, okay. So the Jets will be Surely this last. Surely will be Aaron Rodgers slander. Surely They will be last in this division. The Jets will finish at Thank 5 you. and 12. Wow. They will be the Denver Broncos of this year. Aaron wow. Rodgers will cement himself as one of the most overrated QBs in NFL history. Wow. It's been 14 years since he won the Super Bowl. Give me a break. Like, come on, you know? Yes, but still, man. He doesn't know how to win. And look, beyond that, there are problems with the team. I mean, Corey Davis just retired. Um, Cole Hardman's banged up. This is a very thin wide receiver group. Um, and yes, we've seen Rodgers succeed without a ton of weapons before. But in this stacked division, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Jets will be a mess per usual. In the third place, I'm going to go with the Pats. I think they'll be right around anywhere from 7 and 10 to 9 and 8, um, just short of the playoffs. But the winner of the AFC South, of the AFC East will be the Miami Dolphins. And look, I know that Josh Allen is a superstar. He's an incredible QB. But Tua is also a stud. I mean, yes, he has all the concussion problems in the world. And yes, you know, there are real health concerns there. But when you look at what this team has, the insane receiver core, the weapons, the run game, the line, adding Jalen Ramsey, like, this is one of, on paper, the best teams in the NFL. Just talent, name-wise, everything. They mesh well together. I think they're really, really well coached. And I think this could be possibly the number two seed in the whole AFC. I mean, this is a team that I got going 13 and four probably. And I think the Bills are probably about a game behind. Okay. Yeah, I see, I can, my I thing with. No, I don't see the Dolphins doing that well. I, I really. My thing with the Dolphins. I train. Yeah, I'm more than happy to be proven wrong, but I just need to see Tua play for an entire season before I. I I just have my reservations about Mm -hmm. Tua's health because I think we saw the Dolphins were really good last year to start the season, and then once Tua Mm -hmm. got that concussion versus the Bengals, I think that season kind of went into the gutter for the most part. It did go into the gutter, but I also want to say, you know, we've seen Mike White play really good football for stretches, so I think we're also in a position where Tua could go down for, like, I don't know, four or five weeks, and Mike White could kind of hold them steady in decent shape. Look, obviously they need Tua if they're going to make, like, a Super Bowl run, which the team is capable of doing. Like, you can't deny that, I don't think. But yeah, sure. Mike White, like, you throw Mike White out there, and it's not like it's completely the end of the world, you know? Absolutely. Moving on, let's go to the AFC North. I have the Bengals at 12-5, and five, the Ravens at 11-6, and six, with Lamar Jackson being healthy. I know there's a lot of concerns about the rest of the weapons around Lamar Jackson, but just Lamar Jackson, I think it's good enough for the Ravens. They still put up a decent record. Steelers are a team that I'm pretty high on. I think they're going to be over 500 again, and thus any non-Steelers fan is going to cringe at the thought of seeing the Mike Tomlin stat once again, but I have them going 10-7. and seven. I have nope. the Browns 4-13. and 13. I think the Browns are just going to be the Browns again and just regress back into their dumpster fire, dumpster fire form and just go crashing down again, and we're just going to question why in the world they gave Deshaun Watson all that guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Steelers, sorry, one sec though. The Steelers are a young team, and I really, I think I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Guys taking that I don't step. buy it. I don't buy the Steelers. I really have. I have them at seven and ten. I have them finishing third. I have Browns finishing last. I got Ravens at ten and seven. I got Bengals eleven and six, winning the division. I think this Ravens team is a very good team. But Theodore, I want to hear your take. Yep, I like the Bengals, either twelve and five or eleven and six in first place in the division. I like Pittsburgh second. I think that again, like just. Mike Tomlin will not have a losing season. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. And Kenny Pickett, I don't know. It's like, I feel like he gets left off every single list when you talk about really good young QBs. And I don't know why. I don't know why, like, we don't talk about him more. Because he had a really impressive season, all things considered, especially down the stretch. Um, I don't know. I I could really see Kenny Pickett yet. This being the next rising of Pittsburgh. No. Now, I think they improved their offensive line, too. Like, let's be honest. Yeah, I do, too. line got better. That was their big concern. Najee Harris won't be as bad as he was last year. Mm-hmm. And to the demise of my fantasy team, thank you, Josh Jacobs, for saving me last year. 
And then they still have Deontay Johnson, who's rather young. George Pickens, as I mentioned, the offense is yeah. young. They have Pat Fryer move as well, who they drafted not last year, but the year prior. And then that defense is still great. They are the best defender in the NFL. I mean, right? That's We all agree when that's what T.J. Watt is at this point, I'd say. And I think they're so well set up. Now, for the other two teams, I just have to say, every year, or basically every year, there's one team that we all expect, like we all look at them and we say, yeah, they're solid. And this is like a mainstay, a holdover, not like a team like the Jets where, okay, now they've ascended to being good and we then they have a letdown. Everyone thinks the Baltimore Ravens are going to have a good year. On paper, they should. I think that this is a really, really big letdown for Baltimore. I mean, really? we've seen them have losing seasons in the past. I think this is a 7-10, and 6-11 and 11 wow. type season Wow! for the Ravens. Good for third in the division because the Browns will be atrocious. I cannot see that. No, I cannot. I can. I really can. I, can't, I cannot see that. No. First of all, look. We all know that this is, like, the most injured roster in the NFL year after year. But beyond that, like, I don't know. It's just such a stacked conference. They're playing. They have so many losable games on their schedule, too. Like, I could really see Baltimore, and I do think Baltimore will be probably the biggest disappointment in the NFL this year. Along with That's a shock. All right. Clip that. I wouldn't be shocked. Freezing cold take right there. I I honestly don't hate that take. I think the Ravens, if they do miss the playoffs, they're going to be eight and nine. I don't think they're going to be that bad. Then again, it's one win granted, so it's not. I don't have. I'm not too far off from what your take is, Theodore. But I certainly think if the Ravens have a losing season of any sort or miss the playoffs, you'd have to imagine Harbaugh, long tenure with the Ravens would have to be up by then. So we'll certainly uh, see what happens with the Ravens. I, I I don't think so. I think that 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 I can't agree with because I think Harbaugh is like the same type of. I think it's the same thing like um. Like Bill Belichick, like he's been there for too long. Mm-hmm. Too long. I, I think he's seeking get hot. Only Same one thing. Super Bowl. What? Right. Only one Super Bowl, and that like Harbaugh's right. fireball yeah. with a bad season. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. We'll they just they just more. haven't done much the past couple of years too. But we'll get into they have, that. They've as had well. injuries too. Lamar's always been injured. It doesn't. I, I doesn't matter. You can only Next use that so many times. They haven't been productive since 2013 when they won the Super Bowl. Moving on, though, oh, a couple I years love ago. this conversation, but we need to keep going. The AFC South, let's keep things short. I think we all can agree that the Jaguars are winning. Yeah, Jaguars, Titans, Colts, mm-hmm. Texans. Yeah, I have the Jaguars at 11-6. and six. Texans, Titans, Colts all at 4-13. and 13. Quarterback okay. situation for Tennessee is a whole mess. C.J. Shroud and Anthony Richardson, I expect to not be bad this year. I, I expect them to be solid. But then again, the team around both of them isn't great. Jonathan Taylor, will he get traded? Will he not? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I really like Trevor Lawrence. Like, I think that he is a future possibly superstar QB in the NFL. But? But, I don't know. I just don't love this Jaguars team. Um, yeah, but I it's, think the, that, it's, it's health, man. Uh, is it no? They is the AFC South. They will win the division, but I'm seeing like a more nine and eight, eight and nine, squeak no, it out last week of the season type win. No, I think Tennessee keeps the division competitive. I really do. Um, I think they fall short, but I could see Jacksonville having yeah. a record once again and making it into the playoffs. Yeah, so. I mean, Theodore, I agree with you. It's just I think the Jaguars will be much better. I think I have them at twelve and five. Like I said, Ooh, so. yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. It's a tough take, but like, I really, I really like this Jack team. Like, I feel like they've really been getting better year by year. They've been picking up more pieces. Uh, Calvin Ridley's playing this year, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Forget about that. You know, this team's getting I, much better. I think the conference is just a little too stacked right now for them to make noise this year. But I think they'll close the year out once again. You know, prime to be one of the future juggernauts of the AFC. I just don't think their timetable is right away. Mm, yeah. One I mean, more off is tough. Well, like the division's easy, so that's the one thing you have to realize. Yeah, I, I, I think we should be shocked if they're not in the playoffs. That's what I'll say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Moving on, let's go over to the NFC, and Theodore's not going to like this take right off the bat, but Uh-oh. we're going to go with the NFC East, and here's something that Theodore's not going to like too much. I have the Eagles at 12-5 and five winning the division. I have the Giants and Cowboys both tied at 10 and 7. I have the Commanders at 6 and 11. A lot of people are saying don't sleep on the Commanders. I can certainly be proven wrong if Sam Howell is that guy. But right now, it, it's a um, past year where they're like, oh, the Commanders I'm are I'm putting on my eye mask. I'm sleeping on these 
Commanders. I really do not trust Sam Howell yet. Do I want the Commanders to do well? Yeah, I think they're an underdog at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But I got I got Eagles at eleven and six. I got Giants at ten and seven. I have Cowboys at eight and nine. I have Commanders at five and twelve. I'm not a fan of this Cowboys team. I don't really feel like they've done much, uh, mm-hmm. really in the off season. Um, and um, because of that, and I think this Giants team is just gonna keep getting better and better. I don't see the Cowboys really finishing second in this division anymore. Uh, it's a, it's getting a very it's going to be a very competitive uh, co- like division in the next couple of years. Um, that's why I have Giants finishing right at the tail of the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I have the Eagles just uh, I have like I have the Gi- Giants winning the last game of the season because I think the Eagles rest their players. So Giants beat the Eagles week eighteen, but. Um, I just really like, I mean, this Eagles team is a former, it's, it's, it, they just came from a Super Bowl at the end of the day, right? So mm-hmm. I got, I have to put, give them some respect. Theodore. Yeah. I have three words for you. Time for a really short thought from Theodore about the division, Shirley. Super Bowl hangover. It happens no. every year. It is a real thing. The yes, Bengals were able to avoid it last Eagles, year. They've been getting better. They got so much better in the draft. No. They did have a good draft. They added Miles Jack. Miles Jack retired on them, which is a really big loss. Like, you realize that this team lost some talent. Miles Jack was supposed to be a huge piece. He's gone. Um, I hate to admit it, but I really do think they had an incredible draft. However, I mean, look, they don't have that much going for them. And Nick Sirianni is not a good coach, by the way. Like, I remember the Giants were trashing him. And that was kind of the wrong moment to do it because, like, you were getting smoked by the Eagles at the moment. But Nick Sirianni isn't a good coach. Like, he just has been carried by a good team and a great front office that makes great moves for him. And I think he'll get exposed this year. You know, you also got to look and you got to remember that the NFC East has not had a repeat winner. And now I believe we're up to 18 years. That will continue. I think week 18, Giants and Philly. Go at it for the division title. New York comes out on top. 11 and 6 is good enough to win the division. Philly might also be 11 and 6, might be 10 and 7. Either way, Giants will take the division. Philly will be second. Both will be in the playoffs. I, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to argue against that take. I think it's a very good take, and I think we should quit. We should quit that because I think that might be a very good take at the end of the day. I just have the Eagles just squeaking out of this division at the end of the day. Okay, yeah. And look, I completely agree with you on Dallas. Like, you know, yeah. I think them moving on from Zeke is a big, big symbolic move because they're like kind of, you know, because look. As much as I hate to say, like they have been for the past seven years one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah. Like they've been really, really good. But they like move they're moving on from Zeke. I think everyone they just traded for Trey Lance, which kind of sets an expectation of, oh yeah, maybe Dak Prescott isn't the superstar QB we thought he was. Yeah. I think that this will be about an eight and nine season for Dallas. And I think they'll run it back for one more year after this before finally going to rebuild in probably about 2025, because this is a team who's not title window because they never had a chance to win a win a Super Bowl, but like contention window is rapidly closing. I agree with that. Yeah. Meanwhile, Washington, I don't really believe in Sam Howell. But I really do believe in Ron Rivera. Time and time again, he just shows that he is such a good head coach. Yeah. Last year, I counted them out. Um, and last year, they were able to keep themselves in playoff contention. I think this is a team that finishes 7-10, and 8-9. and nine, Another decent season. But also, they're just a team that needs Howell or another QB to step up if they're ever going to make some noise. I mean, yeah. people for, forget that Jacoby Brissett held down the fort quite well in Cleveland before Deshaun mm-hmm. Watson stepped in. So they Jacoby certainly, they can, if they if they have to resort to Jacoby Brissett as Davy and you know him quite well too from his Patriots days, yeah. I don't think that's a bad option. No, he's back, he's a solid QB. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I feel like he reminds me of like Geno Smith. I feel like if he really got a good opportunity, uh, he could really make some noise. Which, uh, speaking of Geno Smith, I say we talk about the NFC West, Rocky, if that's all right. Absolutely. That's a great segue right there, Dave. All right. Yeah, they're certainly getting better with your segues. I'm proud awesome. of you guys. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, trying what? to pick it up from you, Rocky, you know? 
you're preparing for potentially next week, but that's, yes. that's for another show. Yeah. No spoilers on who's going to be on the podcast next week. I have the Niners at 12 and five Seattle. I have a nine and eight just missing the playoffs. I expect, I don't think Geno Smith's going to be as good as he was last year, but I still think the Seahawks as a whole, I mean, you have, you pick up Jackson Smith and Jigba in the draft and now you have him with Lockett and mm-hmm. with DK Metcalf. And honestly, that's plenty for Geno Smith. And then you also have Kenneth Walker at yep. running back, Charles Cross, their tackle second year into the league. So the Seahawks, I just expect to be, Really good offensively, and their defense, I expect to take another step this year. So we'll see if they make the playoffs. I have them just missing, but I certainly am more than happy to be proven wrong. Rams, I have at 7 and 10. I expect them to be better than they were last year, but I have question marks about Stafford, and then if Cooper Cup can stay healthy, defense as well, even though you do have Aaron Donald. And then I have the Cardinals at 2 and 15. Theodore, I will let you have a little bit of time to slander to the Cardinals. And I did say this, I believe, two podcasts ago. And I honestly would not be shocked if you think that the Cardinals are going to lose more games with Kyler Murray when he's healthy than without Kyler Murray in the first half of the season. Um, yeah, um, I'm so glad that we are all in agreement that the Cardinals are going to suck. Yeah. This is... In for me. Yeah, you know, I mean, how, do you, how do you feel that you have to part with that seventh-round pick? Like, uh, that seventh-round pick is likely going to be yeah, a great guy. Yeah, I know. It's like... You know, what are we even doing? Like, Joe Shin has got to stop making horrible trades. Why would we want one of the best athletic prospects to come out of the draft in the past five years to come to our team? You know, this guy who was, you know, used the wrong way. And, you know, we've got a coach who can utilize him. Like, why would we want to make that move? I don't know. In all seriousness, I'm so happy we have Isaiah Simmons, like, I mean, I saw that. I'm like, wait, what? There's no way. And then, like, fine. Is A. Simmons getting traded? That's, like, one thing. But this was a seventh-round pick for him? Seventh-round pick. Like, how? He's a one-year rental, and that's why, like, the, I mean, that's was, like, the Cardinals. Brought I mean, I guess one-year rental is still, like, sixth or fifth. Seventh-rounder for a yeah. one-year rental? Like, that's insane. Yeah. Our linebacker, we had the worst linebackers in the league last year. I fully believe that. And now we've got studs. I mean... Yeah. This is a really, really good linebacker core on the Giants. Enough about the Giants, though. Yeah. Um, I will be talking about them plenty during the season, so you don't need to get all the info out of me right now. Yeah. The Cardinals are going to be worst team in this division. Yes. But they won't be followed, or let me phrase this right. They won't be that far behind the Seattle Seahawks. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. No way. I, am, I am writing off Geno Smith. I don't care if he writes back this time. No. He had a fluke season. I'm sorry. What, what he did was really, really impressive. Give him some respect. It was fun to watch. But at the end of the day, he wasn't that good. He still had some old Geno moments in there. People are saying, some people are trying to say he's a better QB than Daniel Jones. I'm sorry. He's not even in the same Okay, draft. no. I will. I will. Okay. I've been. Sh- I've been. I don't want to watch my language, but I don't really believe in Daniel Jones, but there's no way you could be saying that Geno Smith is better than Daniel Jones. Um, uh, Theodore, sorry for interrupting you, but I'm going to quickly just go off on a rant real quick. I like this Rams team. I like this Rams team so much, I think they're going 11-6. and six. I really like the Seahawks team, too. I got them going 11-6 and six as well. So I got the 49ers at 14-3. and three. All right, Theodore, back to you. Yeah. Okay. So I don't like the Seahawks. As I said, I think they're probably going to be like eight and nine only because Pete Carroll is able to coach them to decent success. I do really like the Rams though. Like you were saying, I yeah. mean, people really think that a team with Matt Stafford playing QB, Cooper cup healthy again, and Sean McVay on the sidelines with Aaron Donald on defense is going to lose. Like, no, no, you know, yes, Thanks. they lost Alan Ramsey. Yes, they're getting older. They're losing some pieces, but they still got one more year on this title window. They're yeah. still a legitimate Super Bowl contender. I don't think they'll win it, but like, I wouldn't be shocked if they did. Um, yeah. I really think that they will be in contention for the division. They'll probably finish at about eleven and six, giving the Niners at twelve and five. I think. Um, San Francisco is my number two seed overall for the division. Um, I just, I don't know, you know, I think they've proven time and time again that even if 
Brock Purdy turns out to be like a horrible QB this year, and if even if Sam Darnold is just like you know normal run of the mill Sam Darnold, like they'll be fine. Yeah, that's how good of a squad this is. Now, if Brock Purdy plays the way he did down the stretch last year, then this could be possibly the best team in the NFL. That was like right. that that kind of potential. So we'll see how it goes, but I, I think the Niners are a pretty safe bet to win this division. Moving yeah. on, let's let's go through these final two. NFC South. I have my Falcons going ten and seven. Saints Same. eight and nine. Panthers seven and ten. Bucks four and thirteen. Falcons four. seven and seven. That's respect. Honestly, That's too much, I, man. I really do think that Ritter just needs to be a slightly average above average or even an average quarterback for the Falcons to have a solid year this year, just because you look at the run game, you look yeah. at the weapons they have yeah. offensively. Their offensive line was really good last year and it's only gonna get better without Jalen Mayfield being the starter for them. So I really think that offense is going to be better. And their defense was so bad last year. Really, honestly, you could have signed one player and it would have been an improvement regardless for the Falcons defense. Mm-hmm. They made some good moves. Jeff Okuda will see if he stays healthy. Jesse Bates, I like. I think that's a great addition to their secondary. I think their secondary certainly improved alongside mm-hmm. AJ Terrell. You bring in Mike Hughes, too, who I think is underrated, an underrated corner. So the Falcons, I have them at 10 and 7. You can call me biased. I wouldn't be shocked if they finished 8 and 9, 9 and 8. I think the NFC South, though, is going to be very interesting because I don't think we really have an idea of who really is the best team. And we won't really know until midway through this season. So I can certainly be wrong, but I, I'm going to back the Falcons here for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. I think that this will be one of the most fun divisions to watch in football because I legitimately think all four teams have a shot to win it. No. Yes. The Buccaneers are still a good team. The Buccaneers struggled last year with Tom Brady. How are they going to do anything with a QB that they couldn't decide till last week? They couldn't choose between Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield at the end of the day. This team is going 2-15. and I'm writing them off. They're not good. Okay. Now, look, if there was a team that I had to – right off it would be the bucks but i don't know i mean i've seen too many good things from baker mayfield in his career to accept that you know this is how it ends that he's just gonna completely fall apart with this Bucks team when they still have a decent amount of a team that just won a super bowl you know like so what much of the core is still, is still your, hanging around still, man these players getting old they are getting old but like I don't know, and I don't think Todd Bowles is a very good coach. Like, no, I, think I don't. Saw it on display, I think they really, really missed Bruce Arians last year, and I yep. think they still do. But I don't know. I'm going to go seven and ten for the Bucks, which is probably going to put them tied with Carolina. Hear me yeah. out, though. Carolina. Hear me out. If the Carolina Panthers started Andy Dalton for the full season they would have a very good shot to win the division. It's not what makes sense for them. They need to play Bryce Young. They need to get him reps. They need him to make those rookie mistakes. But, like, Carolina has a decent roster. And I was a very big Matt Rule defender because I really liked what Carolina was doing with their team through the draft. They've got a lot of good players, and I think they're a team that could be ready to contend as early as next year. But this division, I think, will be won by the New Orleans Saints. I think that they will go 9-8, and eight, just squeaked past Atlanta to take it. Derek Carr finally has a great receiving core. Um, he finally has a decent defense. And he, this is the best team that he's been around. I fully believe that. Um, I agree with that, but still no. Those 2016 Raiders were good, but this Saints team really has a ton of talent. I think we'll have some growing pains early, but 9-8 and eight with upward momentum headed into the playoffs, I think that the Saints team could be very, very dangerous. I got Falcons at 10-7, and seven, Saints at 7-10, and 10, Panthers at 6-11. and 11. Uh, I, I completely agree with Rafi. Falcons are winning this division. Why? Like, I, I just don't get how— I'm sorry, because I, the- I think this Falcons team is good. I think Ritter has already gotten the experience that he needs. I think that they really built around him. I, I I think Kyle Pitts is really gonna take a leg up this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they have an amazing amazing backfield. The defense they is actually solid for once. They actually have a secondary for once, mm-hmm. uh, which they haven't had in years. I'd say. Um, so yeah, I, I have them at ten and seven. You know, to me, I should see Theodore. My problem though with with the Falcons and 
people's negativity towards them. It's just the fact that they're going from Marcus Mariota, who arguably lost them at least four games, four or five. Yeah. Like, he was that bad. Yeah. And I just have to imagine that Desmond Rear is going to be even slightly better than no, that. No, Rafi, so hear me out, hear me out. And the improvements on defense. Last Desmond Ritter is not a good QB. He wasn't a good QB last year. You he know was. what this reminds me of? Last year, everyone was hyping up Davis Mills. Like, right, right at the start of the regular season, everyone was like, oh, you know, Davis Mills could end up being the best QB in this draft class. Like, oh, you know, he has potential. Maybe he'll be decent for the Texans. And we saw what happened there. I think this is going to be a repeat in Atlanta. No. Um, I think Ritter's I, – I don't even think Ritter will be starting by the end of the season. I'm sorry, Rafi, but I just don't think he's the guy. See, but worst-case scenario, though, for the Falcons, at least, is you go into the draft this upcoming year. If the Falcons suck, that's okay because then you have yeah. – I don't think they're going to be Arizona Cardinals bad, but they still have a, they have a good foundation with the rest of their roster where they just need to hopefully hit on whatever quarterback they take in the top mm-hmm. 10. And the Falcons could be a true contender. Like their window could be open. So I personally don't see it as a downside that if Ritter's bad, but my hope is that the Falcons take another step this year and hopefully make the playoffs. Moving on to the NFC North, we're going to try to go through this quickly. We're way over time, but it's okay because we're having a great conversation. Oh, we have a great time. Time does not matter when you're having a great Lions, time. Lions, 10-7, and 7, Vikings, Packers, and Bears all 9-8. and 8. I think this division is going to cannibalize each other like how I said the AFC West Bears was last year. Bears are winning this division. Oh, my goodness. See, oh Lions are going 11-6. and 6. Vikings are going 10-7. Lions are going 10-7. The Packers are dumpster fire. They're going 3-14. and 14. Look, I trust Justin Fields. I think this is his year. If the Bears do not show up this year, Justin Fields is out the window. He's going to prove himself this year. They got the weapons that he needs. This defense is stacked. This offense is good. Bears are going 11 and 6. I have the Vikings going 10 and 7, but I still I still am a big fan of this Lions team. I think they have they are built a great team around uh you know, they've built a great team. I think the Vikings this is where they start their downfall. Yes, they go 10 and 7, but next year I don't see them going doing that well if they do not make changes. They got, you know, they let Dalvin Cook walk. We have to see if Mattinson really is able to take that RB1 kind of reps and is able to really play that well. I'm high on this Bears team. They're going 11 and 6. Davian, I, I ask you one thing, and that is to say, Da Bears. Da Bears. There we go. Davian, honestly, you you just made a ton of Chicago fans, Chicagoans, very very happy. Yeah. They would definitely treat you to a bratwurst or something like that right now, or some deep dish pizza, which is superior pizza. But we'll get into that another day. Which is horrible. But anyways, a lot of people are proud of you, Davian. I will say that. Theodore, you guys want to know who Justin Fields reminds me of? No, that no, he's is. not him. Yes, he's not Kyle Murray, bro. Kyler Murray. Oh, oh Jesus. No. Now, okay, I think Justin Fields is better than Kyler. Thank you. I, I think he's better. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I just don't think he's that good of a QB. I think, I think the Bears will be fouled this year. I think they'll be 8-9. Um, third best in the division. Give me the Packers at, like, 5-12. and 12. I just don't know enough okay, about Jordan Love to be able to pick him to do better. All right. Um, as far as the top two, this is where it gets interesting. I think that Detroit will be in the playoffs. I think, look, they're clearly a team that's trending up. They're a team that keeps on getting better and better. They're so well coached. Jared Goff is still a very good QB, and I fully believe that. I think they'll go about 11-6. and six, But there will be no match for the best overall regular season team in the NFL this year, the 14-3 and three Minnesota Vikings. Oh my god. That's no. wild. They lost that Adam is and wild, Dallas. man. There's no way. How? Yes. This team has not gotten better this offseason. They've only wait. gotten they were worse. 13 and 4 last year. Okay, yeah, and that's with Dalvin Cook. Now they don't even have Dalvin Cook. That's Running with back everything is going so the Vikings nice. way though. We all knew the Vikings were not as good as their record was. And Theodore, as the Giants fan here, you knew that and you saw the Vikings full display versus the Giants in the first they round. They lost to a great they have Giants. A, they don't have an easy, easy like schedule out here. They're playing good teams. They're playing the they Bengals. Are. They're playing the Chiefs. They're playing the Chargers. Uh, they're playing the Eagles as well. Uh, like and they're playing the Broncos. And they will win those like, games. This is not a good. This is not an easy schedule for them. They had a very easy schedule last year. 
They are going to win a ton of games. They're going to surprise a ton of people. I don't know what they'll do in the playoffs, but I think that they will be the NFC's number one seed in the playoffs this year. I think that Kirk Cousins will have, you ready for this? An MVP season. No. Clip that. Clip that right now. I think There's no way they Kirk are Cousins going. It's going to be MVP. You're talking about Kirk Cousins. Kirk here. Cousins MVP, Justin Jefferson Offensive Player of the Year. What? They are going to be one of the most exciting offenses we've seen in a while. It's a great time to be a Minnesota Vikings fan. I'm sorry, I see All Daniel right, let's Jones. Let's get into this real quick. Let, MVP let's, Cousins. Let, let's segue real quick. Theodore, what is your Super Bowl prediction? Do you have the Vikings in the Super Bowl? I have them in the NFC Championship game, but I have them losing to the New York Giants. This is our year. This is our year. You sound like a cow. No. This is the year for the Giants to make their Super Bowl run. And look, as far as the AFC pick goes, I could go a million different ways. Um, At the end of the day, I think I'm going to have to go with Cincinnati. I think that the Giants will be defeating the Bengals in the Super Bowl this year. But it it could go anywhere in the AFC. You know, even the Jaguars. I I don't know where. Giants over Bengals. Yeah, I have. I'm going to be boring here and just pick the team that I think is going to win. And that's the Chiefs. Like, like, come on. It's it's the Chiefs. And then I have them playing. I have them playing the Niners. I think. If Brock Purdy stays yeah. healthy, I think the Niners honestly should have been the team to come out of the NFC last year if they didn't have every quarterback and almost Christian McCaffrey as well injured on their roster going into that Eagles game. And then during that Eagles game, obviously Jack Johnson, no offense. Or sorry, John Johnson. I absolutely disrespected you, and I wasn't yeah. even trying to. Pardon me, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson. Podcast. My sincerest apologies. The Niners weren't going to win that game with yeah. the quarterback situation. With Brock so I think Curry the Niners starting. this year with a healthy quarterback, I have Niners, Chiefs, Chiefs winning. Mm-hmm. Again. I respect that. Niners. David. Yeah. Okay, so I just finalized it. I have the Chargers meeting the no. 49ers in the – the Super Bowl. I am on this Chargers hype Indian. train. I will die on this Chargers hype train. Uh, I died on the Chargers hype train last year. And then they okay, and it's my turn now, Theodore. It is my turn to do the same. Look, I have... Okay, so, okay, you guys are... Like, you guys are booing right now, but wait till you hear my my championship, like, my conference championship. I got, in the AFC, I got the Chiefs and the Chargers, right? That's fine. In the NFC, though, I have the Bears and the 49ers. The Bears... The Bears are going to the NFC Championship. I'm sorry. I'm going to die on that hill. I also have the Patriots knocking out the uh, Bills in the wild card. Yeah, that, I can see that. Uh, okay. This is wild. David, David, you're getting Chicago too optimistic. We're already optimistic about Connor Bedard. You're, and now you're just inflating no, everyone's ego the too Bears. much. The oh, Bears. I'm telling you, bro. So on that note, we'll close the podcast. Wow, we had a ton of fireworks. This definitely went over time, but it's okay because this was – Probably one of my favorite podcasts that we've done so far, aside from all the NHL ones, which I do love too. They're always dear in my heart. Anyways, be sure to follow us on TikTok, Benchroom underscore sports. Things are booming, so definitely hop on the ride. We'll definitely have some of the clips from this podcast, along with some other takes and memes as well, so be sure to follow us on there. Be sure to like this video, comment what your thoughts are on our predictions, why mine are correct. And then you can also be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. We'd greatly appreciate it. But for Theodore, for David, I'm Rafi. We hope you enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day. And NFL season's just about to get started. Roll Tide. Peace. Roll Tide.